What's up, Pixel Pros? Today, we're diving into the world of retro-inspired tech with the 8-Bit Do Retro Mechanical Keyboard. This isn't just any keyboard, it's a fusion of classic design and modern functionality. We're talking about a keyboard that not only looks cool, but packs a punch with features like kale, box white switches, programmable keys, and multi-connectivity options. Whether you're a gaming enthusiast or a typing purist, this keyboard promises to elevate your experience. That's what I was thinking when I first saw this thing anyway. So stick around as we unpack its features, test its performance, and see if it truly lives up to the hype I've given it. Let's get started. First of all, I want to point out to you guys that the whole reason why I purchased this keyboard in the first place is simply because of its Nintendo classic retro look. The classic Nintendo is exactly where I started gaming in the 80s and therefore it holds something dear to my heart. So when I saw this first announced, I just knew I had to pre-order it and get it straight away. Aside from its classic, amazing aesthetics, the other reason I was drawn to this keyboard is the two massive AB buttons that are macro programmable. Again, they look like they're straight off the Nintendo Classic controller and yes, I just had to have them. So just rolling off a couple of the features here now, it is compatible with Windows and Android. It features 87 keys with N key rollover, a durable aluminium plate and hot swappable PCB keys. It has tactile kale box white switches and die sub PBT keycaps. It comes in two editions, the N and FAMI, each with their unique design. The keyboard offers versatility in its connectivity options, including Bluetooth, 2.4G wireless, and wired. Its independent control panel simplifies operations and programmable A and B keys, along with dual super buttons, allowing for easy customization. The 8-bit do Ultimate Software V2 supports on-the-fly key mapping and macros. It weighs 1,050 grams with a dimension of 376 by 6, by 169 by 6 by 46.8 millimeters. It includes a 2000 milliamp hour battery for up to 200 hours of use. Now, I've been using this keyboard for about two months now, and I think my overall opinion of it so far is that I do love it. The aesthetic of the gray tones with the red and, uh, you know, being part of the whole Nintendo aesthetic just sold it to me when I opened up the packaging as much as when I saw it on the computer screen. The Kale mechanical switches have also performed really well. They have that nice little clicky sound that's not too overbearing and has a good actuation range that can differ between fast typing whilst I'm at work, and then gaming in social hours. When it comes to the build quality as well, I'm generally impressed. I can't see anything that has broken, looks to be peeling off, or is causing any type of issues. And I've been using this every day for the last 60 days. One aspect that I have really liked as well is due to its weight, when it's on my mouse pad, it just, it doesn't really seem to move. Sometimes I feel when I'm in a gaming session, about halfway through my keyboard has begun to slightly twist and putting my wrist in a bit of an awkward angle. But with this keyboard, as I said, it doesn't move and therefore I can keep my wrists in the position that I want them. A second big positive for me is the classical design of it. Due to the really careful consideration of the color scheme, even though you can customize this keyboard, I've just genuinely looked at it and not wanted to. I think it looks amazing. Now, will it fit with many dream desktop gamer setups? Probably not. I think you definitely do need to be someone who, who values the, the kind of the retro aesthetics. But for me personally, I do, and I just look at this thing and I'm just so excited every time I sit down at my computer. When it comes to the wireless or the Bluetooth connectivities, I, I can't, I honestly can't really talk about them too heavily. As I tested them at the start, it connected perfectly fine. It wasn't overly complicated, but I am a wired person, always have been. Uh, I did ditch the original cable that they supplied with it. I didn't think it looked that nice. And I have got my own coiled USB-C cable that I use on my desktop setup. So I just plugged that straight in and it's worked perfectly. All in all, there is only one real negative I have with this keyboard and that is actually the macro programmable buttons. I'm not sure whether it's the, the design of it being a jack connection to the keyboard or also the fact that the cable that connects this little device is about a meter long and therefore leaves loads of wires dangling or drooping all over your desktop. They just didn't really feel like a nice position that I could put it in where it looked nice, where it kept my desktop looking clean. It just, it just looked messy all the time. 
I'd much rather have something been designed properly with maybe only like a 10 centimeter or 15 centimeter cabling that then means it could just be put to one side and the cable would be kept taut. I did like the fact that I could quickly add some macro programmable hotkeys to it, especially as a video editor. There was there was some there are some actions that I do quite a lot and having an extra button to do those things is kind of quite cool, but unfortunately just due to the cabling, the benefit of them being macro buttons and smacking them like a, a big joystick or a big controller from the 80s just didn't win over the fact that it just looked really ugly and t untidy on my desktop and I ended up unplugging them and put them in the drawer and that was the end of that. Maybe perhaps in my next setup I could hide them somewhere and hide the wires but that does seem to be going to quite a lot of effort just for two buttons. I don't know what the perfect solution is. I, I guess maybe make them battery operated and, and make them Bluetooth connected to the keyboard so that they're completely separate? I don't know. But at the moment, the way that it works, it just, it's not nice. But if you put these to one side, for 90 pounds, I generally think that this keyboard is excellent. I love it. I've really enjoyed using it. I've really enjoyed having it part of my setup. I probably will still rotate it with my SteelSeries TKL. But overall, I think this keyboard does get a gaming nerd seal of approval. I do recommend this product. I think it's value for money for how much they've costed it at. And for those people who do love the classic aesthetics, it's, it's a no-brainer.